since uh, Keir Starmer was elected, though originally he was very close to Jeremy Corbyn and seemed to share uh, all his main views, um, they have persuaded uh, Keir Starmer uh, to move the party in Labour terms much more to the right to diminish the ideological space between mainstream Conservatives and the Labour Party. Hello, I'm Brendan Donnelly. I'm the director of the Federal Trust, and I'll be talking today with John Palmer, a member of the Council of the Federal Trust. Um, John is a, a former European editor of The Guardian and the um, former board member of the European Policy Center in Brussels. John, welcome. Thank you for joining us. We're going to be talking about the by-elections last week and their implications in particular for the United Kingdom's capacity to uh, live up to its legal and political obligations in the environmental and related spheres. Uh, last um, week, uh, it was widely believed that um, the ULES issue was the reason why the Conservative Party, against expectations, managed to hold on to the um, uh, seat of, of Uxbridge. Uh, there's been reports since in the weekend press that Rishi Sunak is considering um, rowing back in consequence from some of the, the obligations that the United Kingdom has undertaken in the environmental sphere. Uh, that will be uh, very congenial to some Conservative Eurosceptics who've always regarded as a potential benefit of Brexit, uh, being able to uh, break with, to distance the United Kingdom from uh, environmental legislation and norms of the European Union. Uh, do you think this is serious on Sunak's part or, or is it just posturing, John? I think there's a bit of posturing going on on both sides, uh, both uh, certainly Sunak and I think... Uh, uh, the Labour Party leadership is also uh, speaking a bit out of two, both sides of its mouth. I think the issue uh, in Greater London uh, area, uh, the controls on vehicle emissions, which are a serious health hazard, uh, wrote, uh, became a controversial issue when the coverage of that those controls was extended dramatically out to the furthest uh, suburbs and semi-rural areas surrounding London, where many people using cars and uh, commercial vans and other vehicles, or a significant minority at any rate, um, would be obliged to sell their cars uh, and take more, buy more uh, environmentally friendly, less uh, pollution admitting uh, vehicles in, in return. Uh, I think the the issue will probably uh, be resolved by some tinkering with the timetable for this and possibly um, uh, some kind of incentive to encourage people uh, to replace their cars with uh, electric cars and other cars that are clearly um, much, much less of a threat to pollution of the environment. But it's allowed a degree of public posturing uh, and um, uh, the problem for Mr. Sunak is that he dare not go too far in that direction, the direction that the Eurosceptic hard right would like him to go, because of some international ob uh, international obligations that uh, Britain has, and which uh, many other Conservatives are in favour of honouring. On the other hand, within the Conservative Party, there's uh, an important strand of opinion that thinks that... Uh, uh, environmental legislation and uh, the urgency with which environmental questions are, are addressed should be a, a dividing line between their party and uh, the woke um, do-gooders on the other side of the political spectrum as they see it. Uh, in general, that seems to be a, a current within the Conservative Party which is on the front foot. Um, do you not think that they may gain the upper hand and, and force um, Sunak to go further than perhaps he would wish to go? I think the Conservative Party in Britain is in the throes of a major internal ideological identity crisis, uh, partly as you describe, but more generally it fits within uh, the spectrum that there are uh, growing numbers of Conservatives who buy into what you might call the populist right wing agenda on environment, on women's rights, on gay rights, on a variety 
variety of other, uh, the slogan woke you use, uh, uh, woke issues. So there is an ideological degree of turmoil. Not, the Conservatives are not a party notorious for their uh, ideological level uh, interventions, but there is such a debate going on. And I think it's going to be accentuated and accelerated by the fact that it looks as though uh, we're heading for a general election probably fairly early next year. And in that capacity uh, and in that context, opinion polls are suggesting that the Conservatives will be massively hit, uh, lose many seats. Uh, and that's likely to propel this crisis you refer to, this internal turmoil, to a new pitch. Uh, I even personally think there would be uh, some Conservatives after the next election who will say, maybe we've got more in common with the far right uh, ultra Brexit reform party and contrive a merger with them. I don't know. But this is part of a broader um, struggle for the ideological direction, the political direction of the Conservative Party. As far as environmental questions are concerned and some of the other questions you, you've raised, uh, the argument is, is sometimes made, often made within the Conservative Party, uh, that there's a, 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 an electoral bonus, an electoral benefit to be derived from um, a, a more clearly um, polarised debate within the United Kingdom. Um, do you think that's true, particularly on environmental questions? Or, or is it more a question of Conservatives... Um, uh, within the party, staking out the position for the future of the party after the next election, which, as you say, may well be a, a, a very poor, bad one for the Conservatives. I, I think it's partly that uh, element. That's what I was implying earlier on in, in, in what I said. But I think that the, the, the issue of the environment um, is one that no major party contesting for power can really... Um, engage in uh, with uh, totally Neanderthal pre-climate change thinking. And I think uh, uh, there will be many conservatives who will resent and reject any attempt to turn the party completely in the direction of uh, cynicism and scepticism about climate change. All of this is taking place, as I know you know, Brendan, against the context of evidence that global warming is accelerating to a quite startling and sobering degree. So I think that uh, uh, when push comes to shove, which may be after the next election, at the moment, Mr. Sunak is trying to compete uh, uh, to, co to keep uh, his party united when it's clearly so divided. But after the election, I, I think all the barriers will be off, debating whether uh, we uh, whether they should be moving either in a more populist right direction or to the contrary, back to a more middle ground direction. I would just add that this does to some extent mirror some of the debates taking place in other European conservative parties. If you look at the growth of the populist far right uh, in Germany, in the Netherlands, in France, they have been primarily at the expense of the mainstream conservative parties, the mainstream Christian Democrat parties. Uh, so I think this is part of a, a broader picture than merely Brexit Britain. But there was an interesting counter instance over the weekend in, in Spain, where Vox, uh, which had been regarded understandably and rightly as, as being the far right in Spain that seemed to be um, on in the ascendancy, um, suffered a setback. Um, ironically, people in Spain tell me, uh, partly because um, Spain has had an enormous heat wave in the re in recent um, weeks, um, and it seemed rather rather odd for Vox to be arguing against that background that climate change wasn't the reality and was just a, a woke fantasy. So it, it's a, a mixed picture on the right. Can we talk a bit about the Labour Party and the left in this country? Uh, I was in the Uxbridge by-election and I, I was struck by the, the willingness 
which has become very plain since the election, of the um, uh, the Labour Party, the candidate and the um, Labour Party um, uh, spin machine, um, to blame Khan, the, the mayor of London, uh, for what had gone wrong on, on you, Liz. Um, there were powerful arguments they could have put forward um, rebutting the Conservative position on you, Liz, but they didn't do it. Um, do you think that there's a, a temptation for the Labour Party and Starmer in particular, perhaps, um, to flirt with um, with a, a, a sort of soft scepticism towards um, climate change problems? Uh, uh, does that fit into a larger picture of his um, not wanting to be seen to be um, too polemical, too controversial vis-a-vis -vis the Conservative Party? Uh, this is part of a broader ideological uh, change of temperature that's taking place place in the Labour Party. It's to be seen against the background of the reaction against the previous left-wing leader of the Labour Party, Jeremy Corbyn, who was immensely popular with members, but uh, offended uh, much of the establishment in the Labour Party, who, hold, who held him responsible for electoral failures. And they have, since uh, Keir Starmer was elected, though originally he was very close to Jeremy Corbyn and seemed to share uh, all his main views, um, they have persuaded uh, Keir Starmer uh, to move the party in Labour terms much more to the right to diminish the ideological space between mainstream conservatives and the Labour Party. Uh, and that has had its reflection on a whole number of issues, including uh, now this uh, issue of uh, car pollution and controls on car emissions in Greater London, uh, because it will involve some people selling their cars or replacing them with more um, environmentally friendly uh, car types, um, there are costs involved and it's been a weakness exploited by conservative local politicians. I suspect some kind of compromise will emerge at the end of the day in which the Labour Party will maintain the ban on cars and its extension, but will probably offer some kind of, uh, comp uh, some kind of subsidy or transitional payment to people to help them adjust uh, to the costs of bringing their cars into line with uh, emission and pollution requirements. I, I can see that, that that's a, a tactic um, which will be helpful to the Labour Party in the next few months. Um, do you think this position of um, playing down any ideological gap between the Labour Party and the Conservative Party is one which is sustainable until the general election, which, which by the way, although we'll talk about it again later, I, I suspect will be towards the end of next year rather than in the spring? It might be next autumn. Um, uh, uh, some reports in the last few days from attributed to conservative sources say that if that delay would make the outcome worse. They, uh, that, but you may be right. That is uh, the timing that they may choose. I think that Keir Starmer has taken a big risk with this general reorientation of the Labour Party to a kind of fuzzy centrist position in British politics. Uh, he, he, uh, it's accompanied by a change of the internal regime in the Labour Party to a frankly more authoritarian, uh, stricter disciplined uh, regime uh, under which uh, many candidates to contest the election have been denied approval uh, or removed from the party entirely, some of which, some of whom I suspect will stand as independent candidates anyway in the coming general election. There is more widely, just to add a sentence, more widely a concern that uh, Keir Starmer's uh, interpretation of the big direction of the major issues that Labour should focus on, the economy, environment, uh, social policy, um, are going to be unacceptable in terms of their impact on um, Labour supporters, on poorer people in society, on exacerbating um, 
inequality. So there are tensions building up in the Labour Party, not just about this issue you raised, but more widely the direction of travel chosen by the leadership. How, how widespread do you think this opposition, um, this, this uh, electoral opposition will be at the time of the next general election? Are we talking about half a dozen, 50, 100 um, seats where there might be um, dissident Labour candidates or left-wing candidates? I think there may be more than half a dozen. Uh, whether it's as many as 50, I don't know. Uh, some of them um, will not stand much chance. Others will stand a real chance of winning. There are some that I think may uh, may succeed. I think that the, the, the issue will come to the head of uh, economic policy more than an environmental policy. I think Labour will not want to tread too far away from its commitments on the environment. But I think the big issue will be that and on Europe. There's also a constituency in the Labour Party very worried by the uh, silence uh, or the, the acceptance by the Labour leadership of Brexit, de facto Brexit. They opposed it, of course, but they are seeking to work within its limits. And that is arousing a lot of disquiet among those Labour Party supporters that have always supported British membership of the European Union and believe Britain should seek to rejoin at the earliest practical moment. Uh, and I think the issue around that is going to emerge quite quickly because uh, Mr Starmer will be under pressure to spell out in greater detail what he means by improving our relationship with the European Union, but without uh, joining. It's my impression from the outside that uh, unhappiness about e economic policy, domestic economic policy, is more likely to lead to dissident Labour candidates standing at the election than the European issue. Uh, is, is that right? Uh, I can see there is internal unhappiness, but I don't have any, any sense there's even a nascent um, uh, alternative um, uh, forming itself within the Labour ranks to contest elections in, in, in 2024. No, I don't think uh, you're right. I don't think that exists uh, yet uh, at all. Uh, whether it might come into being in the future hmm. uh, will very largely depend upon the reaction of the broader labour movement, the trade union movement, to all of these issues which are we're touching on, on which there is quite a lot of uh, concern growing and quite a lot of determination uh, not to see the Labour Party uh, move too far as they would see it to the right. So all of those issues, I think, remain to be resolved in the immediate future, uh, immediate months after the next election, assuming Labour is elected, I think a lot of attention will focus on what exactly uh, Mr Starmer intends when he uh, seeks to improve relations with the European Union. I think it will open a host of issues, maybe more than he would initially welcome. Yeah. Uh, we've talked about the... Uh differing views within the Labour Party itself. Um, electorally, um, is Keir Starmer an asset? Um, I, I have a sense of, of, of a certain lack of enthusiasm for his leadership, um, that uh, there's a sense that, that he's perhaps a little bit too content simply to wait for the Conservative Party to destroy itself. Uh, I'm reminded a, a little bit of, of Theresa May's disastrous election campaign in 2017, uh, when very rapidly people fell out of love with her. She'd started off the, uh, the election with quite a, a favourable image, and then a number of mistakes led to a, an impression of, of vacuity, of, uh, of there being a lack of leadership. Do, do you think there's any danger of, of Starmer undergoing such a, a transformation in public opinion? Well, there is a startling contrast to be seen in the opinion polling, because on the one hand, the opinion polls are more or less the same or very, very similar, showing a substantial, maybe a massive parliamentary majority uh, in the forthcoming election. Of course, polls are not votes, but they are pretty much all singing from the same hymn sheet. On the other hand, the same polls asking the question about attitudes to the relative merits of uh, Keir Starmer and uh, Prime Minister Sumac 
uh, as effective, as it were, executive politicians, sees them much more like neck to neck. In other words, 50-50, not exactly that figure, but neck to neck in terms of uh, uh, their credibility. So that is something that uh, Labour will have to address between now and the election. Uh, and it is linked to whether uh, Keir Starmer has the capacity to articulate in more convincing detail how he will respond to the huge, massive challenges we face, economic, the lowest productivity, uh, in highest inflation rate, lowest competitive index of all the country compared with all the countries or all the major countries in the European Union I mean enormous problems uh, you mentioned about the environment you mentioned about other issues on the one hand uh, when conservatives uh, at least articulate what they're against uh, more clearly uh, 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 some might think so I think those are concerns that uh, will draw attention to Keir Starmer's um, uh, role um, as as Labour leader between now and the election. But I still, as matters stand, expect Labour to have a pretty overwhelming parliamentary majority when the vote comes. I was going to ask you for a prediction. Um, you've given us one on, on the, the outcome, uh, but I'd like to go back to the question of the date. Uh, I think it's very difficult for any politician to accept um, that they're going to bring upon themselves earlier than they need to a disaster because of a fear that it'll be an even worse disaster afterwards. I think politicians are genetically predisposed to believe that something will come up to give them the victory they so richly deserve in six months' time, if not in a month's time. So I would be very surprised if, if they don't go to the very last moment, to December or perhaps even January, if that's possible. Uh, any any further and final conclusions, John? Um, yes, I can see your point on that, Brendan, but I think that the chorus of people who have the longest and deepest experience of uh, clinging on to the 11th hour and 59th minute, which normally betokens a, a subsequent disaster, uh, will probably... Uh, get their way and there will be a reluctant uh, acceptance of a, a spring election. I, I think the only thing I would like to say in conclusion is that I would hope there will be more exploration of what Labour in practice, in government, assuming a more than comfortable majority, will seek to actually do in ways of restoring the European-British relationship uh, European Union British relationship uh, uh, to some extent. I think these raise enormous issues. Personally, I think the path will eventually lead back to some kind of new uh, 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 de facto uh, joining of the European Union in stages or whatever. But um, uh, whether or not that is the case, it's going to overhang and uh, and. Uh, live with and possibly drive the basic politics of uh, the next government. I, I fear that Keir Starmer and, um, and uh, his, his colleagues may, may be reminded of the biblical um, phrase, Lord, Lord, those, not all of those who cry, Lord, Lord, will be forgiven. I, I think there will be a bit more to be done than just smiling at the European Union make any difference to the relationship after 2024 or 20. I, I agree. The smile may help at the beginning, but substance will re be required for anything credible to happen. No, no, no question about that. Thank you very much, John. And uh, I hope those of you who've enjoyed this, um, this video will watch uh, other videos and read other um, material that we have on, on the Federal Trust website. Goodbye and thank you for listening.